Hi there, my name is Justin, and this is my assignment 3 video submission for PFTR 1121. Um, so for assignment number 2, I actually did a, a paper on minimalist shoes, and this is because I own and train in minimalist shoes. Um, and I've always kind of wondered, what are, the, what are the benefits, what are the drawbacks? Um, are these shoes helping me achieve my goals? Um, and are these even considered minimalist shoes? Uh, I kind of always thought they were, um, but we're going to go into that a bit in, a little, in the presentation here. So we're going to define minimal shoes, uh, we're going to talk about the benefits and drawbacks, and give you a little quiz at the end to see if you're listening. Uh, so some background information on minimal shoes is that they have increased in popularity in the last five years or so. And this is because a lot of people think that we should go back to our kind of more primal and natural movements. Um, with with a relatively minimal shoe, allowing our foot to do most of the work instead of having the shoe do most of the work for our feet. Um, so there's no standardized, no standardized definition until about 2015 when Escalier, Bubois, Dion, LeBlanc, and Roy came up with one. And so their three main points that they decided should be in the definition were that they're lightweight, flexible, and there was small heel-to-toe drop. So part of the lightweightedness comes from having a very thin sole all around, um, as you can see here. Uh, these are, in fact, minim minim minimalist shoes, uh, so I should clarify that. Um, the top and the sides also have a very a minimal material, and so they're going to be very lightweight just because they have so little material. And again, since they have little material, they're going to be very flexible, allowing them to move to your foot instead of having your foot move to the shoe. Um, there's also a small heel to toe drop, meaning that the heel here is about, well, on this shoe particularly, it's about three quarters of an inch, and the front it's about uh, half an inch. And so just having like a relatively small drop is uh, something to look for in a minimalist shoe. Um, New Balance actually has two different kinds of running shoes, just that I'm showing right here. Um, and this is a minimalist shoe, and this is a more traditional running shoe with uh, a lot of support in the bottom here. And so, obviously this one is a lot more lightweight. You can tell that um, even just the cutting off the bottom um, has significantly reduced the weight of the shoe. Whereas this one's going to be a lot heavier just because of how thick the sole is there. Um, flexibility wise, you can't really see how flexible they are, but you can kind of assume that since this one has a thinner sole, it's going to be more flexible, especially at the bottom there. And uh, as far as the heel-to-toe drop goes, um, you can see that the heel here is very uh, very small, and the, the toe is also relatively small, whereas here the heel is, is large and the, it tapers down quite a bit toward the toe there, so there's a fairly large heel-to-toe drop. Um, as far as the benefits go for minimalist shoes, um, they have increased mobility. So when your foot's in them, the, it actually doesn't come up as far on the ankle either. Uh, and so this gives your ankle more mobility, as well as it gives your foot more mobility while it's in the shoe because the bottom is, is able to, to torque and twist um, the way your foot naturally would if it's going over some uneven terrain like rocks or, or something like that. Um, so there's increased mobility, um, there's also increased muscle growth in the leg and foot. Um, and this is due to the fact that you're actually using your your feet uh, and legs more. Uh, you're just you're counterbalancing you're counterbalancing the fact that you don't have as much support in the shoe with um, biomechanics. So you're you're using your your muscles and your bones to actually do the job for you instead of letting the shoe do it for you. And that increases bone density as well. Um, some, some drawbacks of minimalist shoes is that there's less support. So, I mean, more flexibility, less support. Um, so, with the less support, they're obviously a lot thinner, and there's less support in the ankle. So, um, you ha you'll, you'll actually have an increased stress on joints, so your ankles and knees might take a, a bit more of a beating. Um, and they're also relatively new to the market, so there's very little research done into these, as well as very little product development. So they're still kind of learning how to perfect them and make them, um, I guess, like individualized uh, to your foot, um, but also that they're able to mass produce them, right? 
Um, there's also very little grip on the bottom, as you can see. Uh, it's, it's relatively flat. There's not a whole lot of grip, just because they want to keep the, the sole nice and thin, which provides the, the lightweightedness that, that is um, very prominent in, in male shoes. Um, so some points of indifference here. Um, are that injury is actually no different uh, when wearing minimalist shoes versus wearing traditional running shoes. And this is because your muscles and your bones are actually doing more work to, to kind of counterbalance the, the issues that you come across um, uh, with a minimalist shoe. So when you're using a minimalist shoe, you have the support of your uh, increased bone density and the support of your increased muscle mass in both your legs and your feet. Whereas if you just used a uh, traditional running shoe, you're using the shoe to provide those supports. So the, the proneness to injury is actually pretty similar. Um, there's also the ability to perform exercise. Um, so it, it really just depends what you want to do. Um, obviously they're both running shoes, that the ones I showed you. And so you're still able to run just as fast, just as, just as far. But uh, as far as like other exercises and stuff like that, you might have a bit more flexibility with these ones and a, a bit more ability to do um, some of the more technical aspects there. But uh, if we're just looking at running specifically, then it is, it is pretty uh, indifferent. Um, as well, there's postural stability. So, um, Zek, RGB, Wolesson, and Ra Ralph, um, they actually did a, a study where they would have people in traditional like training shoes like running shoes um, and then minimalist shoes and just bare feet and they actually showed that um, when you're in bare feet your uh, postural stability is is like quite a bit uh, hindered just uh, especially when you're doing jumps and stuff like that um, when you're actually providing an impact of, of your feet onto a surface um, but when you're using uh, traditional running shoes or minimalist shoes, um, the postural stability you get in either of them is actually pretty similar and, and still better than uh, just regular no, no shoes at all. So uh, let's do a little review here. Um, so which of these statements are false? Uh, minimalist shoes blank. So minimalist shoes encourage leg muscle growth. Minimalist shoes increase your risk of injury. Minimalist shoes provide you with more mobility, or minimalist shoes increase stress on joints. So which one's false? Uh, I think I went over this just not that long ago, so you are right. It is, um, they do not provide uh, an increase in risk of injury. So they are actually indifferent as far as injury goes. So just in conclusion here, uh, there's no adverse effects. Um, the, there's no increase in injury. However, you do get increased flexibility, but decreased, um, uh, sorry, increased flexibility as well as increased stress on joints, but overall no um, increase in, in proneness to injury. So it, it kind of just balances out there. Um, they're, also, they're also sport or function dependent. So if you want something with more dexterity, flexibility, you would choose a minimalist shoe um, just because these provide you with that, whereas regular running shoes, they are, are more just for nice, flat, even running. And overall, it's your feet, so you better choose a shoe that you like. Um, you, you're going to choose a shoe that's, that's dependent on your needs. And so, I mean, I love minimalist shoes because they, they give me what I need, but again, that's up to you. And so here's my reference list. Uh, these four references, the three from the paper, and then the New Balance website for the images. Thanks for listening to my presentation, and have a good day.